70th pick in the 2012 NFL Draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars select Brian Anger, punter, California. Is it worth it to draft a punter? Now look, I know you're watching a channel called Isaac Punt, so you're probably expecting a biased answer, but no. Today I'm going to try my best to put my insanely strong punter bias to the side and see if it's actually worth it to draft a punter. Now before I get started, if you want to punt away your tobacco habits or just support your favorite and possibly only punting YouTube channel, go to CandidateCBD.com, get a couple cans of the Candidip CBD pouches with 10 American grown milligrams of CBD inside. They're perfect to help you beat your tobacco cravings or just relax a bit. So go to CandidateCBD.com and use promo code PUNT at checkout for 20% off and just to make me smile. But back to the punting analysis. So to do this analysis, we're going to take a look at all the punters drafted in a couple draft classes, notably 2009, 2010, just so we can properly analyze how those draft picks have turned out over the years. I'm using 2009 as a starting point because a good lord, that was stacked for punters and a good case as to why you should draft a punter. Okay, so of the three punters drafted, you had a, you know, a little known guy named Pat McAfee out of West Virginia, Thomas Morstead out of SMU, and Kevin Huber out of Cincinnati. Two of these, Morstead and Huber, went in the fifth round, which is kind of right on the cusp of what some would say is too high to draft a punter. But if you look at their contribution over the past 13 years, Morstead gave the Saints arguably one of the best punting careers of all time. A first team all pro, assisted in winning a Super Bowl in his first year, and someone they could count on before moving on to Blake Gilligan in 20. 2021. Now, since it's so rare for any draft pick to stay with a team for 12 seasons, yeah, I'd say that is worth it, along with Kevin Huber, who's still with the Bengals 13 season lingers. McAfee also had an amazing career with the Colts, although he cut it short in 2016 after putting up insane numbers in his 10 years. But to really know if it's worth it or not, we have to see who they missed out on. Two notables are Arian Foster, a running back who would go on to be a four-time Pro Bowler, and Michael Bennett, who would later contribute to the Legion of Boom for Seattle and help them have one of the most dominating defense in modern NFL history. But that being said, I think there are plenty of other people in the draft classes for the Colts, Bengals, and Saints that probably would have been more desirable to be replaced by Foster or Bennett than any of the punters that I just named, who actually all happen to be what I would call generational talents. The 2010 draft paints a very different picture though. Taken in this draft was Zoltan Mesko, Brent Bolden, and a notorious draft bust for punters, Matt Dodge. Now, in comparison to the 2009 draft class, this is probably the worst draft class for punters of all time, which is a slap in the face to some of the great punters that didn't get picked up the year before, like Tim Mastay and Britton Colquitt, who both got picked up in free agency. Zoltan Mesko went to the Patriots, who typically have a great eye for punters, but this time, you know, it wasn't disastrous. It just wasn't fantastic. Only serving three years with the Patriots before eventually getting cut for Ryan Allen in 2013. But in his tenure, he put up, I guess, decent numbers with a 43.9 yard career average. This would be the best of this draft class, as Brent Bolton would go on to be drafted the next round and just never play a single snap for the Bucks, who he was drafted to, and Matt Dodge would go on to have a decent season, but then go to contribute to the Miracle at Meadowlands with a botched short line drive punt to one of the best return men in the history of the game when all he had to do was get it out of bounds. So of these three, Zoltan is the only one who did all right by lasting three seasons in the league, but who was missed out on. Ironically, the best undrafted free agent of that class was Victor Cruz, who would actually get picked up by the Giants. So I guess you could say they dodged, uh, no pun intended, a bullet there. So you might be thinking, this is a great demonstration of why not to draft a punter since the Patriots missed out on what would become legendary receiver Antonio Brown to get a punter they'd only have for three years. But here's where I think that you're wrong. I would say that even the NFL analysts get sucked up into the wrong thing when it comes to drafting punters. Here's my example. When the Giants drafted Matt Dodge, he was a former ECU pirate. ECU is right in my state, and I'll tell you what, we don't have winners like New York does, and the miracle in Middlelands was a chilly one degree Celsius that day at kickoff and likely cooled some off by the end of the game, giving Matt Dodge something he hadn't experienced before, along with pressure that was like none other he had ever faced. 
having drafted him for his big leg and not his control and consistency means that they probably brushed the side any consistency problems he might have had in hopes that he would get that figured out. What they didn't prepare for was that aspect of his punting game to rear its ugly head at the absolute worst time. Now, if they had gone the year before and picked up Tin Maste, who is used to playing in bigger games and at a small group of five school, as he was from Kentucky, and slightly harsher winters than that of a college coastal town in Carolina, things may have ended differently for that game. But what limits teams is that they'll let a stellar draft class slip by because they always assume that there's going to be another good punter the next year. But like QB draft classes, that's not always the case, meaning that some gears, when they really need a punter, they get left with some guys who are less than desirable and ultimately leave them wondering if they should have ever drafted a punter to begin with. But that's just my thoughts on the subject. On screen, I've got two video draft choices for you to pick from. One chosen by me, the next one generated by Big Brother's YouTube algorithm. Make a better choice than the 2010 Giants, please. And as always, have an amazing day and peace. Hey,